feel like I'm intruding, as weird yeah, as yeah. that sounds. Yeah. Our journey today starts in Horses, a small village situated on the Cambridgeshire Suffolk border. To anyone that has followed us over the last five years, you may be familiar with its location, as we filmed episodes here in both 2012 and 2014, as well as performing dozens of other investigations here over the last six years. Tonight, we will be returning for yet another visit to this very haunted churchyard, armed with new technology and a greater understanding about what we might be dealing with. The first church in Horsethief was probably built around the 12th century and was practically rebuilt in the 14th century with the addition of a church tower. In the years since, like most medieval churches, there's been numerous alterations and additions to the architecture, each in its own way giving a snapshot into the fashions at the time. Although it may seem very similar to other churches in the area, Horsethief is very special. Over the last six years, I have become convinced there is something supernatural occurring in the grounds of the churchyard here. I suppose one thing you might be wondering is why on earth would we return to the same place over and over again and do multiple investigations here? simple idea is that one night of paranormal investigating isn't enough to get an idea about what kind of activity is going on at a certain point. Um, even during the course of one night, you can have five minutes of activity and five hours of nothing happening, so obviously one night will definitely vary from another night uh, according to activity. Also I think it's a good idea as well because you can kind of pinpoint certain areas of a place that are more active and has more uh, sort of paranormal goings on. And whilst we're on the topic of returning to certain sites, I've made a number of interesting observations in Horsethief over the years. Something I have noticed from coming here for about six or seven years is that there seems to be two different energies in the churchyard. One seems to be very willing to communicate and uh, very open and the other one does seem quite negative. And again, going back to why we keep investigating the same place over and over again, is because from one night of investigation we probably wouldn't have picked up on this. Um, but like I say, over the course of five years it definitely does seem to be two separate en energies around the churchyard. Horseheath has given us all manner of activity on previous visits, including what we believe to be intelligent communication through EMF meters, dozens of EVP and even threatening messages through the spirit box. But one of the more sinister things to have occurred happened in the porch of the church when we visited in 2014. Look, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What? Can you not see that? Fucking hell. Quick, let me get this on camera. That's bad. When we came here last time, it was in the porch, which I can remember correctly, you felt quite negative the first time yeah. you came here. Um, what do you remember about having that scratch appear on your arm? Um, well, I was kind of just stood, like, over there, watching you being filmed by Nick, and it just, just I, felt, I felt like I was bit, um, so I pulled my sleeve up to check, and there was like this big, big old scratch from sort of about there to halfway. As you can see on the footage, it wasn't there a couple no. of minutes beforehand. No. There's nothing to bump into inside no, the No, I was literally just stood, hands in my pockets, watching. So how are you sort of feeling about coming back in here tonight, um, considering how um, you felt last time? I'm a little bit anxious, but I don't, I think because it's still daytime, I don't necessarily feel so, um, I don't know all the words, but I just don't feel so... Not so creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, so creepy out, yeah. Um, but I'm still anxious about 
if it happens again, I might be less inclined to come back. Do you know what I mean? If yeah. it happens again, so. Well, find out in a few hours. Yeah. The last few times I've investigated at the churchyard, it's been quite quiet in regards to activity. But this isn't unusual, as I have known for it to pick up and die down at times. But who are the spirits that haunt here? Probably one of the more obvious ideas that they are in some way attached to one of the graves in the churchyard. I don't know how much I subscribe to that idea. I think it's more likely to be the case that whoever is here has some kind of religious connection to the church, possibly an old rector or priest. I'd really like to try and get to the bottom of some of these unanswered questions and, with each investigation here, it's another step in the right direction. We left Horseith and travelled a few miles up the road to another location we'll be investigating tonight, the Bartlow Three Hills. We first came here back in 2013 with myself being the only person present who is still part of the original team. We picked up on unexplainable EMF readings, people getting physically touched and an all round unpleasant feeling. It was originally thought that the Bartlow Three Hills were the final resting place of the people who fought in the Battle of Ashingdon in 1016, however excavations in the 19th century revealed it was in fact a burial mound for a rich and probably important Roman family. There was actually a Roman villa a few miles north of here that was in use right up until the 4th century, and it's more than likely that the people that lived in the villa were actually buried here. Although the hills are quite scenic and a popular destination for dog walkers and visitors during the day, at night the atmosphere transforms into an eerie and unnatural darkened abyss. So while I was trawling through the internet trying to find some information about the Bartlow Hills, if there's any um, hauntings supposed to be here, I did find another group that came here in 2006. Um, they didn't film any of it, but they did write up a report. Um, now it does seem very much like they're sort of more of the mediumistic approach to investigating. Um, so whether you take it as uh, full truth or whether you take it as a little bit with a pinch of salt. Um, but anyway, this is the report we've got. Um, apparently, at 10.36 in the evening, Denise is patted on her bum. And then at 10.40, Denise is pushed. Um, and a little bit later on, Denise links with Adam, who is a small child. 10.41, Andy has his pain in his lower back. Um, and then at the same time, Pete witnesses Andy's jacket depressed as if someone is putting their hand on his back and flattening the material. Um, and he still has back pains at this time. Coming up to 11, Andy and Pete feel very cold. Pete is pinched on the back of his neck. Um, and at 10.59, three orbs are caught on camera behind Andy. Um, and basically the report keeps going on and on, just uh, highlighting different events that happened. But one thing that's interesting with this is what they talk about, a lot of it seems to be quite negative activity. Someone who doesn't want people visiting here, which is something I think yeah. when you came last time, it's something you experienced as yeah. well, was quite a negative, oppressive yeah. atmosphere around here. So it is quite interesting. I'd say take that report with a pinch of salt. Um, I don't know 100% how true it all is, um, but it is interesting they're picked up on the same thing as we have as well. As it grew darker, we returned to Horseheath to start the first of our two nighttime investigations. So we've just arrived at the Horseheath churchyard for our nighttime investigation. Um, as you can see, all three of us here, and we're joined by Emma today as well. Hello. Um, who's James's sister, and you're somewhat of a skeptic with this whole thing. Yeah, I don't really get with the whole idea of it sort of thing. So, well, <laughs> hopefully we'll change your mind tonight. Yeah. Um, had a brief walk around, doesn't feel too atmospheric at the moment, but as you know in previous investigations that can all change. Um, really bright moon tonight as well, so very little chance of falling over, but well. <laughs> That'll be for the outtakes. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, let's get cracking. So my name's Luke, you've probably seen me around here before and I'm sure you recognise Sophie as well. Yeah, I've been here, was it, was it a year ago? A couple of years ago. A couple of years yeah. ago. If there's anybody around us at the moment, can you come forward and try and communicate with us in some way? Give us a sign you're here. Can you make a noise or speak. Can you 
come and speak to us, please. To this box in my right hand. So there's a lot of noise coming from. Where is it going that way? We'll be able to turn the difference there. Can you tell us your name? Or a message or anything you'd like to give to someone? Perhaps tell us how old you are? Or if you're a man or a woman? Okay, I know you've been able to use this device when uh, We've come here before, I know you've been able to use this to communicate with us. Can you do that again? I'll try putting that down next to that one as well so you can... Yeah. Put it yeah. down on the floor if you need to build your energy around it. You can use my energy if you need to. Yeah, use any, any of our energies. You need to take the energy from our equipment, our cameras. If you need to do that to, to contact us in some way, you're more than welcome to. We can get those lights to go off. Come on, give us some kind of a sign. Even if you can just change the atmosphere around us so we can feel you. Someone's knocked over your gravestone. Just give us a sign that you're here. If you want us to leave, you have to tell us, you have to show us in some way. Anyone else? No, feeling I'm not feeling anything at all here. No. Funny enough, other than being at night a little bit creepy, it feels exactly as it did when we came here earlier. Yeah, mm. it feels just like it's daytime, pretty much. I mean, obviously it's, it's creepy because it's a graveyard at night, but it, it feels fairly kind of chill. Yeah. That's something I was talking to Dan about earlier, the fact that, that we, we've gone here in the day, yeah, and then gone away and then come back, so yeah. we can actually have a chance to <coughs> test whether or not we anything does feel any different. Yeah. Heard that creaking from those trees. Yeah, yeah it might be the gate. I think I'll go for a little walk around yeah, to see if there's any areas that maybe feel a bit different. <laughs> right, Sophie, see how you feel when you're walking there now. Last time I'm not 100% keen on yeah. being in here, but I'm not. Is there anybody in here with us? We hear your voice. Who was it that scrapped Sophie when we came before? Come forward. Do you want to scratch me again? Do you not like me? If you don't like me, feel free to say. My hand's blank. Do you want to just notice that? What's that? My hand's blank. That's probably where I led on the. Ah. I've got the energy to scratch someone. I'm sure you've got the energy to, to move that light. Yeah. I was thinking about that actually, if, if you want to scratch something like... Luke, at this point, do you have any idea at all to any of the characteristics of what could be here? 
Um, so ma ma male, female, old, yeah. young. Uh, I don't know to be honest. Like I say, there's definitely two that hasn't been for a while. But the last few times I've been here, there's there's definitely two different energies. There's definitely one that's kind of all right and wants to communicate and talk with you, hmm. and there's another one there that is not nice at all. But then you get some nights like I've done recently where just nothing happens at all, and it's just there seems to be nothing there whatsoever. Hmm. So I don't know, it's quite strange. And the other thing that I've noticed as well is when it feels bad, you don't get much stuff on the equipment. Like EMF, okay. EMF meters won't go off. So it's more like you feel it emotionally yeah. rather than... Yeah, but you won't get anything on the equipment. But when it's kind of more pleasant energy around here, that's when you get stuff on the equipment. So it's weird. I don't know how it works. But that's one thing I've noticed. We remained in the churchyard for another hour but didn't experience any activity. What's interesting as well is that none of us had any unusual feelings like we have done here before. Whoever, or whatever it was that I'd communicated with here in the past, was clearly absent on this investigation. We decided to leave Horseheath and travel to Bartlow where we'd begin our nighttime investigation there. So we've just, just arrived at the Bartlow Hills at the moment. Um, as soon as we got round here, everyone has said it feels a bit strange here. A lot stranger than Horseheath. Um, definitely a lot stranger definitely, than Horseheath. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of, um, I don't know. You'd think a creepy graveyard would be somewhere you'd feel strange and like a bit un it, unhospitable, but no, definitely a stranger feeling here. So we're just going to, you know, Go for a walk around first and just see mm. what sort of areas are more sort of feeling with them. I kind of feel like I'm intruding, as weird yeah, as yeah. that sounds. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I'll say, the, the impression I've got over in the past is that there's someone almost protecting the hills. Yeah. So I was standing like right here and I thought it sounded like walking through this grass here. Is there anybody here with us? Don't mean you any harm or disrespect by coming here. I'd just like to communicate with you. Can you come towards us? Give us a sign you're here. What was that? Feels sick, man. You're feeling it as well, Dan. Yeah, I have done since we ever since we walked up the path to get here. Really early. like bad hunger pain. <coughs> not, not bad hunger pains, but like dizzy, heavy. When you sick. haven't, I feel like when you haven't had something to eat for ages, yeah. it's like up in your ribs, like. Is there anybody here with us? Although there was a very strong feeling at the hills, we weren't recording any physical activity, so we decided to split up into twos and try some communication on top of different hills. Is there anybody up here with us? Can you give us some kind of a sign? Remember when we came before, you're quite aggressive to my brother. If you want us to leave, you need to give us a sign. Do you like pushing people? I've heard you do that quite a lot. Who else has been pushed? Marcus. Yeah. There's other people, apparently. Yeah. Come on, I'm here if you want to push me. I'm sure you've got a reason for it. I'm sure you've got a reason for being aggressive to people around here. If you don't want us here, simply show us. Tell us. Speak into that box in Luke's hand and tell us that you don't want us to be here. If there's any energies or anyone who's up on top of this hill with us, can you go down into that hole and just stand? move yourself around where those two dots are 
where the two little green lights are. If you just go down there and sort of either stand around it or if you can touch where those dots are. Um, I'm surprised we haven't got anything even on that grey box yet. I'm surprised. I mean, given how you and I both said we felt when we first arrived here. Yeah, man. How are you feeling now? Because I'm still, I'm still, I'm like still Ill. pretty dizzy, to be honest. Yeah. The sicky feeling's sort of gone, but I've still got a bit of a funny head. Printed out some Latin words. Now, I'm guessing that whoever was here probably didn't speak Latin as such. Um, obviously, the Romans would have spoken the lang some form of language like Latin. And when they came over, I'm guessing over the centuries it would have probably changed slightly. But um, I thought Latin's just as good as English, if not a little bit better. So I thought we'd give that a go, um, asking some questions in that, just to, just to see if anything happens. Salve. Salve. Mia Norman Est. Luke. Mia Norman Est. Sophie. Desiree. So basically there what I asked was, hello, my name is Luke, and Sophie said my name is Sophie. Yeah. Um, and then basically I just said speak and held out the recorder. So we'll see if we caught anything. No, I didn't pick anything up there. No. Come on, are you here with us now? Make something happen up here. Move something. I'm going to knock this out of my hand. Use my energy if you need to. Why are you so defensive about the hills? So we're just rounding up the investigation now at uh, the Barlow Three Hills. I think everyone here will agree it has felt a bit strange here tonight. Um, we haven't picked up on anything, but that does seem to raise more questions than answers. Me and James were just talking a little bit earlier. <laughs> we basically said that how can a place go from being really haunted to all of a sudden you get no activity there at all? It just doesn't seem to make sense. And what was it you said about um, sort of energy wearing out over time? Yeah, it could be a thing of having having energy be in an area like this and having a lot of people coming and doing investigations just over time, like a battery, it just gets drained and drained. So it could be down to that that we haven't picked up anything or it could just there's a number of different variables that could influence the fact of why we have or why we would or would not get anything so it, it could be worth another try another time yeah definitely it would be interesting to see but yeah for tonight like i say unfortunately we didn't get anything but it's, it's still interesting nonetheless yeah. could it really be that over time hauntings at locations either weaken or stop completely if this is the case it produces more questions than answers <laughs>